what's that? You don't have a PS3 or an Xbox 360 or Windows Media Center hooked up to every television in your house? And yet, you want to watch the movies that are on your computer, on your television screen, in those rooms too? What are you going to do? Who are you going to call? Well, my suggestion is that you download XBMC. Originally designed for the Xbox, XBMC is an excellent way to take the media that is on your computer and display it on your television screen, or even uh, allow you to listen to the music that's on your computer through your home theater sound system. So we're going to look today at how to download XBMC. We're starting out here at Google, and I simply enter in XBMC, and you can see that it's suggested right away. It's the first item on my list, and there's even a link there for download, and I'm going to go straight to download. And as you can see, XBMC is available on a variety of platforms. I have Windows, so let's go to Windows. And I click on that, which takes me straight to the download page for XBMC for Windows. And all I have to do is click on Save File. It asks me where I want to save it. Now, I normally save my installation files on a network drive, and that way I only have to download it once, and I can install it on as many of the computers on my network as I want. You may want to put it on your desktop. And obviously, different browsers uh, download differently, and you can configure them to either ask you where to download or they automatically download to a location. There's not, it's not within the scope of this tutorial to figure out where your browser is downloading, that's up to you. But in this instance, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to download to the desktop. It'll make it easy for you to see what it is that I'm doing. Okay, a couple of minutes have passed. We've got XBMC uh, on the desktop, as you can tell. And all I want to do now is open it up. Yes, even though the publisher can't be verified, I want to open you. And it has a setup wizard, so we will just click right through this. And, of course, you want all your other programs closed whenever you're installing new software. It asks you whether you want to accept the license agreement. Yes, you do. And the next thing is it gives you options uh, of whether you want to install everything or not. And sure, we do. It asks where we want to install the program. We'll just put it in our program files folder with the rest of our programs. And really the only question that you need to answer during installation is how do you want to store the data associated with XBMC? And that really depends on whether or not you have more than one user on the same computer. If you have more than one user on the same computer, then you're going to choose the first option. However, if you do not have multiple user profiles, it's more convenient to have everything located in the XBMC folder in the program files so that later on when you want to uh, play with the XBMC setup and maybe hack it a little bit, Everything's just located conveniently in the same folder. So that's what I'm going to do. But, it, but the functionality of, in terms of the user interface of XBMC really doesn't depend on which of these choices you make. And now it asks you where you want to have the shortcut to XBMC in your start menu. And I want to have it in my media players folder. You could also check down here, it says do not create shortcuts. You could just check that, and then it wouldn't give you a shortcut at all. And after that, you just click install, and voila, it is now installing Xbox Media Center, uh, XBMC, I'm sorry, it's no longer Xbox Media Center, XBMC Media Center on my Windows computer. 
it's going to occur extremely rapidly, and the temptation would be now you've got this little software package on your computer. You want to open it up. You want to play with it. Stop. Resist the temptation. You do not want to do that. Before you ever open XBMC, I highly recommend that you structure your files uh, with the proper names and your folders with the proper uh, arrangement so that XBMC can easily identify your media. And one of the great things that XBMC does is it will pull off of various places in the Internet information about your media and associate that information with each movie uh, or each album that you have and it will display that in a really nice way. So, see this little box that says Run XBMC Media Center? Don't check it. Don't run it. Watch my next tutorial on XBMC where we'll talk about how to structure your folders and name your files so that uh, XBMC will correctly <clears throat> identify your media and give you the full power of its ability to scrape information off the Internet. So, again, don't run XBMC Media Center now. Wait until you've completed the next tutorial. It's going to be quick. It's going to be simple. But there's a right way to do it that will make everything straightforward and easy, and there's a quick way to do it that will make the rest of your experience with XBMC frustrating, and um, you're not even going to want to use it. Now, we're done with the install, so we do not need this installation folder anymore. And particularly if you're on a netbook, you want to get rid of that because you don't have a lot of storage space. So I'm going to delete that off of my desktop. And that concludes our tutorial. Come back next time. We'll talk about how to do your folders, how to arrange your folders and name your files so that XBMC will be smooth and easy sailing for you and you can experience all of its power. And